we've recently learned about a really exciting new project that's happening in our district. The National Wetland Trust of New Zealand is an organisation that works to promote the preservation of wetlands around the country. Here's their website, www.wetlandtrust.org.nz. If you click the National Wetland Centre link, you can find out all about their plans to create a national visitor centre at Lake Serpentine, just north of Te Aumutu. There's a map on the webpage that shows you where the lake is. If you know the road between Te Aumutu and Hamilton, you'll recognise the spot. It's about 5 kilometres north of Te Aumutu, opposite McFall Road. You've probably seen the sign plenty of times as you've driven past. In September 2010, the Wetland Trust held the AGM at the Waipa District Council Chambers and invited the public along to see the proposal in detail. A Memorandum of Understanding was signed by the Trust and Waipa District Council, which formalised a commitment to build the centre. The Council hasn't committed any money, but they have agreed to provide support and help make the process move forward smoothly. The partnership is very important, and uh, as, as I mentioned, we want to uh, support the trust in every possible way. Uh, quite clearly we will continue with the work in enhancing the lake. From a Waipa District Council perspective, we are very pleased to be um, associated with the trust. Uh, we'd like to think we've established a superb track record and uh, that's one of the, the very strong reasons why the, uh, the trust is wanting to partner uh, Waipa District Council and to share in the facility or the amenities in the way of the peat lakes that we've worked very hard to uh, protect and enhance. We want to show you two presentations that were given at the AGM. The first is a 10 minute presentation by the Trust's Executive Officer Karen Denyer explaining exactly what the proposal is. The second is a 30 minute talk given by NIWA scientist Paul Champion covering the history and current state of peat lakes around the Waipa district. So let's hand over to Karen, who's going to tell us all about the Trust and their proposal. The Trust has a number of objectives. Um, it is bigger than a wetland centre, and that's just the, the focus of the first slide. So we're looking at um, basically increasing the appreciation and awareness of wetlands in New Zealand. As, as Greg has already told us, we've got less than 10% left. Why? Because we haven't really valued what, what they can offer us. We haven't understood what they can offer us. And now we have a much better understanding. Probably a lot of the people in this room have a fantastic understanding, but the wider part of New Zealand, they still perhaps need to embrace wetlands in the way that we do. So how is the Trust looking to um, increase awareness of the value of wetlands? Well, we do it a number of ways. One is to get people out enjoying wetlands. Probably everybody in New Zealand has a really strong affinity with things like tui and, and, and our forest and our mountains because we can see them, we can access them. But not so many people can access wetlands and that's something that we want to change. So we're developing a web directory that's on the Wetland Trust uh, website, go and have a look at that. And we're also um, are developing wetland trails on the ground, so there's signage and, and telling people where they can go safely to, to view and enjoy wetlands. And we run a number of field trips during Symposium World Wetlands Day. We also want to provide more information to people on, on wetlands and we do that through a number of um, avenues. <coughs> but our big flagship project is the National Wetland Centre. Now I titled my talk Why Water, just healthy water, strong, strong good water. And that's just a tag name really. We don't actually have a name for the centre. And if anybody wants to win a bag of uh, chocolate fish, maybe you can come up with a fantastic name and tell Kerry before, the, um, before Paul talks over. But that is still something that uh, we need to come up with a really good name that just encapsulates what the centre's going to be about. <coughs> but there's been a lot of talk tonight about where. Now the, the Trust has, um, it actually owns land at Rangaruru. And that was the first um, proposal was to build the wetland centre at Rangaruru. A number of things, uh, uncertainties arose in that location um, around where the, the highway realignment was going and where the District Council was going to be focusing its, um, its developments. And at the same time, Waipa came to the Trust and said, what do you think about this location? And the trustees looked at it and just went, wow, this is beautiful. One of the things the Trust wanted to do at the Rangaroo site was recreate a whole range of wetland types to represent wetlands from around New Zealand. Here, at Serpentine, four of them already exist, so that, that just halves the cost of uh, having to do that. 
So what is Serpentine? If you don't know the site, it's a, a complex of three linked peat lakes. I understand it used to be one peat lake, and Paul might talk about that a bit later on. And uh, there's a, a mature Kanikatea forest stand there, about a century old stand of um, white pine forest there. The whole site's around 20 hectares. And it's quite an ancient system. I'm going to leave Paul to talk about that. Uh, there is a, a, a bog restoration trial going on that uh, the Landcare Trust of New Zealand and Landcare Research have been working on how to recreate one of our rare bogs, our rest air bogs. And there's also some cultural features. So there's all sorts of things going on on the site. So here's a, um, an air photo taken by John Greenwood, who's in the uh, audience here somewhere. The little round one up where the pointer is, is East Lake, and that's really the focus of where the Wheatland Trust is looking at um, putting in some boardwalks and walkways and interpretation, and putting um, a fence around it, like the Mangatotri one, to, to get rid of all those pests. And let's have some more Wheatland birds. I live in Cambridge and I'm just blown away. We've got tuis everywhere. I saw Harkin in Cambridge the other day. I've seen Kiru, I've heard Bellbirds, and it's just amazing. When I moved to Cambridge, 14, 16 years ago, if we got one tui in the winter time, it was just so exciting. It's like a tui. And, and this is all because of the work of, of Mangatauri and um, Brahma Waikato and other pest control agencies getting rid of the pests. So we know what we can do with forests, how we can change how the forest, but what about wetlands? What about our wetland birds? This, just up in the corner there is the Kahikatea forest I was talking about. And running along the top there is State Highway 3, just to orient you. And the top photo is of East Lake. It's a really pretty site. So where in the world is it? This is the bit that makes me nervous because it's technology. <laughs> if any of you get vertigo, you want to just hold on to your seat. Um, if you know what, where you parked your car, you might want to just keep that it's actually still here. <laughs> okay, so we're in Tiawamutu. So let's go travelling up the highway. And there's that little complex with the three lakes that we talked about. And where the little hut is, is where we're thinking we could perhaps put a building. At the moment it's, it's mown pasture. It, it, that particular site is, does not have high ecological values. Um, the areas behind it are where all the really special natural features are. We don't want to be impacting significantly on those. We recognise the value and beauty of those as well. So we're thinking of perhaps a building closer to the road. And the front end will sort of be the national experience. And then you'll go through that gateway, through the building, and it's sort of like, here's a wetland we prepared earlier. Um, you go and enjoy a local experience of some real wetlands after your virtual wetland experience. So just to show you a bit more context, we've got the airport's not too far away. I'll just give you a little overview. So you can also see we're not very far away from Mamakotari, as Greg mentioned, you can't see it from Serpentine quite close to the world growing champs. Field days, there's all sorts of things going on in this in this area, so it's not a bad location to put it. So the why, I'll just give you a number of those, why um, it's a good location. Um, the opportunity to partner with the, um, the parties that we've just signed MOUs with, thank goodness. It's on the Golden um, Triangle, as it's called, for tourism. So you've got Rotorua and Waitomo and up to Auckland. And it is really lovely, lovely spot there. As I said, there's already a range of wetland types present, so we don't have to recreate those. And we think it's the heart of Wetland Central. Auckland can have their party central. We've got Wetland Central. <laughs> so what are we looking at doing there? Putting in a building, obviously, that would be the, uh, the visitor centre component. But much more than that, we're looking at creating a, a, a pest-free sanctuary for wetland wildlife. There's that bog that we talked about, that recreated bog. There's only... Um, it's got a plant there that only occurs naturally in about three other places in the Waikato. Well, actually, it only occurs naturally in three places, and they're all in the Waikato. Um, opportunity to bring back some of the species that have disappeared from that area, and to put in things like bird quays and bird hides and bearing towers, and tell people to come and enjoy it. So here's an um, air photograph, just zoomed in a little bit more, just, just to give you a bit of a sense of the lie of the land, focusing on that, that smaller east lake, and yeah, the purple lines there sort of indicate where the reserve boundaries are. Inside that purple boundary is the um, Department of Conservation Administered Wildlife Management Reserve. The Kahikatea stand that's been purchased by the Waipa District Council. And it's a recreation reserve, is that right Tony, the Kahikatea stand? That's Eastbourne. And around the boundary is another piece of Eastbourne Reserve. 
And in the middle here, where we um, potentially could put the building, is um, it's Crown land, but it's administered by, by, by Waipa District Council as a recreation center. Currently, not a lot of public use, not many facilities there. So um, there's an opportunity to make it more accessible to the public. So this is potentially what we could um, put on the site. And this has been up on the poster around, hopefully you've had a good chance to have a look at it. See the green line around the outside is potentially where we could put a predator fence. So the building might be the gateway into that. As you come from the highway, highway uh, three, and into the car park, you'll go through sort of a virtual wetland journey from what we envisage maybe starting off as an estuary. So you get off, you get out of your car, you walk across this mock estuary. Okay, we can't put a real one there, but we've got some ideas about how to do a pretty groovy looking uh, representation of one. And then maybe be walking up the braided river, so representing the South Island wetland types. And that might be the pathway up to the wetland, which is up in the centre, up on a little rise. And maybe we'll have an alpine tarn there. And maybe we'll throw in a little geothermal wetland along the way. So that's, that's sort of the more constructed part up, up front. Inside the gate, that's when we want it to be a really natural experience. And that's where we want the wildlife to flourish and people to be able to enjoy the peace, the quiet and the beauty of the area. Finally, there's always that thorny issue. So the trusts uh, managed to build up enough funds to do the background planning. And we've had some really good support from a number of the local funding organisations. So when the, the trust gets community endorsement, we've got firm agreement with the Department of Conservation. We, we've already signed off with Waipa District Council, so we've got a few other little um, things that we need to tick off. And then the trust can go forward and go to the sponsors and say, We've got the community support, we've got the agency support, we've got the plans, we need to bring it all together, and um, that's when we'll be looking for some serious funding to do that. There will be some um, need to generate income to keep maintaining the site, so we will be looking at entrance fees at the visitor centre for that. But there's also opportunities for additional revenue through things like guided walks and um, events, so we don't relate. These are some of the organisations that have already given us funding and um, we thank them uh, hugely. Some, some have given us funding, some have given us uh, support in kind, so staff support. So who's, who's going to benefit? Well, Monica had a delightful little daughter here, she's in the back there. Ruby May, hopefully Ruby May will benefit from this, which is a little bit older. Um, we want to get the kids away from the uh, Playstations and the Xbox and computer screens and get them out actually enjoying nature the way that we all grew up kicking around and poking eels and prodding about in mud and having a good time outside. So it's a really good opportunity for us to uh, create something exciting that the kids will want to go to because there will be some of the interactive stuff there, but hopefully at the same time we can get them outside enjoying it. Uh, the local community, we really want to bring the local community along with us and that's why tonight we, we um, Presenting this proposal to you, we're asking you for your feedback, write notes, sticky notes up on our um, whiteboard there, or write in our old fashioned Facebook, it's an actual book there for those of you who aren't online. Um, or you can join our Facebook and, and let us know what you think through that. Um, but give us your feedback, let us know what you think, and let us know what your concerns are, and um, if there's any issues that we need to work through. But we think it will be a really exciting project for people to get involved in. Businesses, of course, are going to benefit because there will be some additional tourism coming through there and the local businesses who are involved in helping to set up and run the, the centre and educators because it's really going to be a safe place for teachers to take school groups through to see some wetlands because there's just not many places you can do that. So I just wanted to finish on a lovely photo of um, East Lake. It really is a pretty sight. So if you like what you see, maybe not literally. <laughs> Thank you.